Hey guys, it's Manager Kylie, and in today's video, I'm going to explain to you how scoring in track works for a dual meet. So scoring for track is very different than other sports. It can get very complicated when there's a lot of different events going on at once and you're unsure which team's winning, losing, how everything's panning out. It's very different from like a basketball when it's pretty obvious that you look up at the scoreboard and one team has a lot more points than the other. You can tell they're winning where each event is scored individually and then added together, it can be harder to tell who's actually winning the meet. So today I'm gonna to go through and explain how scoring and track works specifically for a dual meet and how to tell when a team is winning and how to understand a score sheet. But if you guys are interested in more sports administration, coaching tips and drills that you can use with your team, definitely hit the subscribe button, turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload this, post a new video every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. This is specific for a dual meet, so this is when one team is competing against one other team. There is different scoring for champions Championship meets and relay meets and I will have separate videos in the future on those so definitely check those out and I will also link a playlist at the end with scoring for all different sports so you can understand how scoring works for many different sports. So there's two basic things to understand when scoring. For every relay it is scored five to zero so the team that wins gets five points and the team that loses gets zero points and for every other event on the track and on the field it is scored five points for first place three points for second place and one point for third place the total number of points does also change depending on how many events are actually happening in a college meet you're going to have events like the decathlon the heptathlon all of those the steeple chase that are going to add more points to the total versus high school meets that don't participate in the events they're going to have a smaller total number of points which just makes each event mean more and have a higher impact on the team so we're going to start with the track events and then we're going to move on to the field events where the track events it's pretty simple to score it's really just based on how they finish when somebody finishes in first for everything but relays you get five points second you get three points third you get one point that's pretty simple and when you're looking at a team score it may say that somebody it was five to four that just means the team that got five points scored first place and the team that got four points got second and third place or it may say nine to zero which just means one team swept the podium for that event it all is just adding together so you look at each of the events and say okay for the 400 hurdles we had six points and they had three points that means we scored first and we scored third and they scored second it's a lot of just looking at it and adding it together and it's definitely helpful if there is a running total during the event to kind of keep track of where each team is in the standings now for field events it gets a little bit more complicated because field events can have ties you don't really have ties in running events people are able to figure out down to decimals of a second on who won versus who came in second but for field events you do have the ability to have ties this is generally for jumping events when there are literally ties straight through every two people have the exact same amount of misses make exact same heights all of that you end up with ties you generally don't have, end up with a tie for first place you usually have a winner but you do end up with ties for any other place below that so when there is a tie it does turn into a half a point this is when you might see a team with a half a point and there's two different ways that this can happen so if there is a tie for third place so somebody gets first and somebody gets second if there's a tie for third place you will end up with each team getting a half a point so you'll have one team that got five and a half and one team that got three and a half however if there's a tie for second place you add together the points for second and the points for third so you get four total points and then you split those in half and you just won't have a third place because there's two people tying for a second they cover both the second and third place so each team would get two points there's also the chance that there isn't enough people competing in events so if you're in a dual meet and your team has one high jumper and the other team has no high jumpers the person that wins or is the only person that competed in the high jump will just get five points they won't get all the points so the times that the points are added up and then split between the two teams is only when there is a tie if somebody just is the only person competing they only get the points for that place and the other four points just kind of disappear they don't get counted to anybody because nobody actually competed to get those points and for relays on the track like I said before it's pretty simple you can tell if even if there's three relay teams and some one of the schools has 
two of the four by four, you still only count first and you count second. So first gets five points and second gets zero points. That's it. No matter what happens, it's only first that actually gets any points for their team. So what you do is you just add up all the total points that each team gets. So it's easiest to add up all the different track events and then add up all the different field events. It's definitely helpful to have a running total as the track events are happening. The field events are all happening at once. So it's hard to keep a running total. You kind of get all those score sheets at the end, but it's definitely important to understand that once you add up all the track events and all the field events, whichever team with the highest score is the winner. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this, definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you're interested in any other track scoring videos, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I can explain all of that to you, especially for championship meets or relay meets. And definitely check out that playlist linked at the end with scoring for all different sports. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Oh,